It's Tuesday, April 23rd, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On Barnstable today, it's another Public Safety Tuesday. We check in with Chief Sonnebed, make a visit to the Hyannis Fire Department for a look at Phase 3 of the new station, and there are just a few more days left for open burning. Now for a look at municipal and legislative news. The Town of Barnstable is pleased to announce complimentary six-hour parking at the Red Cross lot located at 299 South Street in Hyannis. Located in central downtown Hyannis, the Red Cross lot provides a convenient location for everyone with year-round easy access to local businesses on Main Street, the High Arts Cultural District, Hyannis Village Green, the Hyannis Harbor Lo Overlook, the Hyannis Harbor, as well as the various transportation op options nearby. For information about parking permits and the many other programs we offer at the Town of Barnstable, please feel free to contact the Park Happy folks at www.townofbarnstable.us slash parking division. Chief Sonnebin joins us in studio for his weekly update. We have a cornucopia of topics, something for everyone. Our weekly chat with Chief Sonnebin has lots to talk about. How are you doing today? Good, yourself? How was your Easter? Too. Easter was really, really nice. Uh, had some beautiful weather at the end of the day. Any distractions? No distractions. <laughs> <laughs> we have lots to talk about today. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had some grants and some uh, movement on the shooting range. But first yep. I wanted to talk about uh, the grant that the police department got for distracted driving. Yes, distracted driving. There's a, we have a traffic grant, enforcement grant. So a basis on overtime, we'll have officers out there looking for people that are distracted while they're driving right. and when people say distracted while they're driving obviously the first thing that comes to mind is the cell phone however although that is a big player today uh, there are other things that people do while they're driving that get them distracted you know sometimes people you know, I've pulled people over reading newspapers while they're driving <laughs> doing lots of other things other than what they should be doing which is driving right. the automobile because quite honestly things can change pretty quickly especially when you're in traffic Somebody stops in front of you, a kid runs out in front of you, all kinds of things. So you really need to be paying attention when you're driving. And that's what the whole heart of the problem is. The whole heart of the matter is when we're doing these grants, we're out there looking for people that really aren't paying attention while they're driving. And that and seatbelts, too. Right. So when you're, you're out there looking for uh, distracted <coughs> drivers and, and you have the ability to stop somebody mm -hmm. is this more of an education piece to them rather than you know we're just going to keep ticketing people it's, it's it's not about the money is what i'm trying to say it's really about education it is about education and that's why we've publicized it that's why we talk about it um to let people know hey you know you, you can't be doing this right you know there's all sorts of ways that you talk about the phone, um, mm -hmm. you know, iPhone and uh, the Android phones all have distracted driving uh, settings that you can mm -hmm. turn off. Uh, one of the ones I know that just recently was a car turnover that somebody was reaching for their purse. Yep, so, so it's not just, right. it's not just the, <laughs> the uh, cell phone, you know, the radio, everything else is people just get, they, you know, you take driving for granted. You get a little complacent, right. you know, people eat while they're driving, yelling at your kids in the backseat, <laughs> you know, all kinds of things. But right. right now the cell phone is the big thing because quite honestly, the law in Massachusetts can be a little confusing because drivers over 18 are allowed to talk on the phone as long as they have one hand on the wheel, but they can't let it distract them. And, you know, some people get rather animated when they're talking on their phone, but so that can make it confusing for people. They, you know, I'm allowed to dial my number or call my phone, you know, so that's when you pull them over. A lot of times they'll say, well, I was, I was just talking on the phone, you know, because they know, but you, know, you shouldn't, really shouldn't be doing it. And so there's been some legislation filed right. to make Massachusetts a hands-free state while you're driving, but, you know, it's still plodding through the bureaucracy, so we'll see what happens with that. All right, so don't drive distracted. Don't be distracted. Excellent. And then the second thing that we wanted to talk about is, uh, this is, comes back to training for the police force, is you, there's been no uh, shooting range uh, here in the town of Barnstable for several years now. For a while now, yeah. And uh, it looks like there's movement and the uh, shooting range will open back up. Well, cautiously optimistic right now it is, um, MEPA was the la latest hurdle they had, to cr they had to get over because of the land change and all this other stuff. Would it trigger another review? And so far, they're saying no. However, there are other things that need to be done. There's, there's work, safety improvements that need to be done, cleanup that needs to get done, um, plans that need to be formulated. So there are still things that need to get done. And anywhere along those steps, 
could be, you know, could get hung up or something. So right. it may, you know, we're hoping that it will. Um, and then if it does, you know, the town manager's already talked about, you know, having the police department run it initially as a police department range and then look into the feasibility of opening it to the public, developing a plan, how would that work, and then coming back to him and presenting him with a plan. Mm -hmm. So there are still a lot of things left to do. Um, and you know how government works and it could be, you know, there could be stalls along the way, but right. so we'll see, one day at a time. Uh, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. uh, having the ability to have the range open to your officers um, and training, that's, that's a big deal though, right? That, that you guys is are going like up to Sagamore? Or right now we go, out, we go to a variety of different places. We go to Monument Beach, but you know, there are other places. We can go, some have mentioned going out to the air base and whatnot, right. but the big, the big thing um, with having it here in town is the officer can be working, pull off the road for an hour, go do the range, and go back to work. Where you put it out in Monument Beach or you put it anywhere else, you, those officers have to be off. Right. You send them and then they come back. You know, once they're gone, they're gone. It's, they can't respond. If we're out at the range, if we're in town, if something happens, you know, they're only a radio call away and they can right. get somewhere else in town if, if there's an emergency get out of town, now you've lost that ability to get them quickly to anywhere they might need to be. So. Right. And also, uh, shooting a gun, is it, it takes practice. You can't just say, I know how to shoot a gun and then leave it for a situation mm -hmm. where you might need to use it. You actually have to right. practice the, the techniques. Like anything else, you know, you gotta be, you gotta be practiced at it in right. order to be good at it, in order to be competent. And the state does mandate there are certain things that we need to do when we qualify, so it's not just standing there in front of a target and shooting the target. A lot of it has to do with target identification. Can you tell the difference between good person, bad person, person with a gun, person with a pen in their hand, things like that. Plus also with uh, the police department, uh, two thirds of our department doesn't work during the day. So they work at night. So you have to, pr you have to practice, you know, can you do these things under low light conditions? We do have a trailer on our property that allows us to do some of that. But even still having the ability to train at night or in low light conditions does help because you get flashlights or other things you need to consider, you know, in the rain, other things that we're out there because we're not just out there in perfect weather during the day. You still need to train in these other conditions. So if something happens, you have trained and you know, your skills will work. Right. And then the last thing we're uh, going to kind of touch on is uh, the National Drug Take Back Day. You always have a box mm -hmm. at Barnesville Police Department mm -hmm. um, at the station to take back uh, unused drugs. Yes, we do. But there's a national day for that. April so 27th, April correct? April 27th, yes. Yep. Uh, we'll be setting up. There'll be Usually we get people from the DEA. We take the drugs back, we log them back, and then we officially return them to the DEA. They get destroyed and all this other stuff. But like you mentioned, we do have a box that is in the police department front lobby down 1200 Finney's Lane. So any time of day, any day of the week, any month of the year, you know, you don't have to just wait for this one day. You can come in and if you get some prescription pills or you get other, narc other drugs or whatever need to get destroyed, you can throw them in the box and they just go in there and then we tally them up and we turn them in as they're supposed to be. So. Right. What's the importance of that, of number one, getting them turned into a safe place? Well, it's a lot of different things, you know. It encourages if people know you have drugs in your house, they're not going to break into your house. If you got, you know, some medications, older medications in your house and kids get into them, um, what people used to do is dump them down the drain. You know, we're not on a sewer, you know, a lot of places aren't on sewer on septic, so that leaches back into your environment, it leaches into the water table. So that's a no-no, don't do that, don't dump your drugs down the drain. Um, bring them into the police department. We're not the only police department. There are other police right. departments that do have these things. And you know, even some pharmacies and stuff, you can turn these in. You, if you have any questions, you can call you know, a pharmacy, you can call a fire department, you can call us, and we can point you in the right direction. Just don't throw them out in, in the backyard or, right. or whatever. You know. April 27th? April 27th. Excellent. Thanks, right. Chief. Have a great day. You too. The new Hyannis Fire Station has entered the third phase of construction with new apparatus bays, a mechanic shop, and a training tower. Channel 18 put on the hard hats and got a tour of the new utility facility. So explain to me here what we're looking at. So these are pull-through bays? That's correct. Those Each are the, complete? That's right. Each of the red doors are a pull-through bay. What you see to the right over here from that ambulance over, the building is complete. That is what they called phase one. Phase two of this project was actually knocking down our old existing building. Okay. 
What you see from the ambulance to the left is what they call phase three, which is two more drive-through bays and the repair shop. Okay, and these drive-through bays, do they accommodate all your uh, apparatus? That's correct, that's correct. We have the ability to put a vehicle in any position. That's fantastic. Yeah, it is. Let's take a look inside. Absolutely. Where we just entered into, this is the repair shop. Wow. As you can see, there is no cross beam structure across this part of the repair shop. Right. So that gives me now the ability to take our tower truck, which is 48 feet long and 80,000 pounds, and lift it in the air in the building. It also gives me the ability to take the aerial part of the ladder truck, swing it off to the side to lift the cab in the building. My goodness. So with this design as the master mechanic, was yes. there was your input like oh, kind of Absolutely. Yep. Every every phase of the way for this room, I can honestly say that they included me in every every part of it. I'm measuring the vehicles. What I did was based everything off the ladder truck, our biggest, heaviest vehicle. Right. So then everything else is kind of a no-brainer. It would fit in here perfect. Wow. Yep. That's amazing. Yep. So that ladder truck, that's a big that piece of a, apparatus. It sure is. <laughs> it sure is. And it gives me the ability to put my jacks on each wheel and lift it above my head in here. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about this building and, and what you'll do here besides just the mechanics piece. This will be, well, It'll be all the maintenance on all the vehicles. It'll okay. be all our small pumps. Basically anything that breaks will go through this room. Okay. In some phase. Right. Whether I fix it here or whether I determine I can't fix it here and it has to be sent out. Right. That all goes through this room. Right. And there are other people that will help you do this mechanic stuff or is this all on you? Uh, right now it's all on me. Okay. It's all on me. I don't know what the future holds, but right now it's all on me. Okay. Right. And, and talk a little bit about the longevity of some of these vehicles. If you can keep them on the road longer, oh, what's that cost savings? You know, it's I don't have be. an exact number figure for you, but I can, I can honestly right. say this, that a, a, a basic pumping engine is probably in the $700,000 range. Right. So the longer you can keep it on the road, that's definitely a savings for the community. Absolutely. My goodness. Absolutely. Yep. That's yep. fantastic. Yep. Anything else you want to tell us about the building? Ah, uh, let me see here. Heated, Any technology? Heated floors. Heated floors. Heated floors. Make up heat in the ceiling, just in case you open up the door and the floor doesn't quite get the temperature up quick enough. You have make up heaters in the ceiling. All right. Down in the back here, that's actually going to be my stock room for all the parts, uh, nuts and bolts, my toolbox, everything will be in there. Off to the left, that little cove you see to the left will be my office. Oh. Above the whole repair shop is going to be a mezzanine with uh, storage, so I can put my tires up there, all my heavy pieces to keep this floor as open as I possibly can for room to work on. All right, yeah. give me an indication of the difference from this to where you just came from. Oh, it's night and day, it's night and day. Uh, the old building was basically um, a garage. You have to also realize too that when that building was built, vehicles weren't the size they are now. You know, we right. didn't have this type of technology. We didn't have the lift systems and all that like we had, like we have now. Yeah, we've just evolved and w with the evolution comes, you need space. You really need space for these vehicles, absolutely, without a doubt. And trust me, we'll fill this up. Excellent. We will, we will fill this up. In this phase, in phase three of the construction, where you just went over the mechanics bay, we also have two more apparatus bays that we, we've, we're incorporating in this section of the building, and some um, support rooms that'll stretch along this area here to break up um, the area from these bays and the existing bays that are already built. So right now, we had to build this temporary wall, uh, which went up uh, during phase one. So when right. we took down our old building, that was fully enclosed. They're in the process now of starting to take down that temporary wall, and then they'll finish up these support rooms. And these support rooms will include uh, our breathing air room, so our, our SCBAs, which we wear into fires for our air tanks. Yeah. Uh, there'll be a maintenance room for those. There'll be a, a work room so we can work on saws and equipment. Um, there'll be uh, uh, a wash room where we could have uh, all our vehicle supplies for all our supplies for washing the vehicles. And then the, uh, the hose tower, which we've incorporated training. as. As part of this project, we've tried to incorporate as much training into the building as possible. 
So um, there'll be some training props up on the mezzanine over these support rooms. We'll be able to do some confined space entry down into the room below through manhole covers. We'll have simulated walls that we could breach. And in wow. the hose tower itself, we can do high rise operations, throw ladders to it, um, work the stand pipes, and, um, and uh, just do different evolutions in the building itself as part of our training, which, which right. is nice, which we really didn't have the ability in the old station. The old station was about 18,000 square feet. This one's uh, close to 34,000 uh, square feet. So it's, it so gives you've, us- So you've doubled the space, but you've also created this ability to do so many more things in that space. Yeah, and, it, and even, the, even with doubling the space, there are still sections that are still tight for right. us, which is, which everything is manageable and and it's going to work great for us and we've we've kind of as far as future growth if we have future growth um we've kind of accounted for that in the building so we've like for instance the bunk rooms we added an extra bunk in every bunk room we've added um uh, we have some mezzanine support space if we had to add more office space on the, on the administration side we can take over that mezzanine space which we use for storage now and then if we had to move this way, we could actually push the mechanic out if we had to years down the road. I'm sure Ron would have yeah. an issue with that. But, <laughs> but if we ever had to, uh, right. we have the ability to do that, which is nice. Right. So. so what else about this process that is going to, number one, make the community safer and two, um, you know, better prepare the staff and crew at the Hyannis Fire Department? It's just a much more healthier building for personnel. We had a lot of issues, asbestos issues, uh, sewage issues, backing up uh, raw sewage in the old building. Um, there was a lot, of, there was some mold issues. So it's a much healthier building for the personnel working out of it. And then um, as far as uh, technology, we've really improved our technology, which helps us get out the door faster. You know, we're, we're in the process of reducing our response time. Even though it's a bigger building, the way it's set up and designed is we put a lot of thought into the way we flow through the building to our gear racks, to the apparatus, and get out the doors. And the way we've set up our dispatch uh, with the assistance of the police, we've moved uh, dispatch over to the police, um, and we've incorporated a new alerting system that as soon as the call comes in and and they accept it it's it's toning out for us here so um there we don't have that delay and have to wait for a dispatcher to take all that information and then activate um the alerting system it automatically does it as soon as they press a key on their keyboard back in the uh the police station that's amazing give me a a, a sense of I guess the the feeling of the rest of the staff here. Now that you're you're into the building, it's almost near that completion. How is the staff reacting? Besides the the uh, faster response time, but how are they reacting? Is the is it a little bit easier to come to work every day? Uh, yeah, there's much more buy-in, and 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 it's much more acceptance from the staff. We did a great job. We lived out of that building for a long time, and it served us well. We just outgrew it, and with with this building. Like I said, we do have the room, for instance, our apparatus floor. Over there, we had to back apparatus in on angles. We, it was tight. You had to be careful pulling a truck out or backing it in. Right. Um, we had to share bays. Over here, we have plenty of room to, to work around the trucks. We have um, uh, the, the, uh, the firefighter area is well laid out for them. And it's much more enjoyable coming to a station that, that the community has invested in and and uh, basically provides us with all our needs to, to do the calls, which we're still doing roughly 20 calls a day in between, you know, all the construction that's going on. And the way we phased it was was pretty good. You know, it, it is a little tough right now where we're limited to four bays. We have to kind of position, uh, strategically position apparatus outside or we, we had to uh, rent space over at the mall. Uh, but once this portion of the building is done, we'll be able to house all our current apparatus, which will be, be great because we've never had that ability. Even the old station, we had to park uh, equipment outside. So, um, so uh, 
this this station will provide suit our needs a lot better than than uh, anything we've ever had. All right. And give us a um, a rough time frame of completion. So we should be done mid to late June. The project should be completely done, uh, which is coming up quick. Yes. <laughs> which is time is flying right. by. So uh, we're looking forward to that and. and uh, we'll, we're looking forward to having our first full summer out of the station. So, right. any last thoughts for residents of Hyannis? No, we just appreciate uh, uh, the support that the community has given us. It's been tough because uh, just the burden on the taxpayers on Hyannis, uh, right. they're footing the whole entire bill. So, uh, it's not spread throughout the town. So, we're very grateful for their support. It took us a, a number of tries. But they came out that last time and they, they support the fire department. We really appreciate you know, what they provided us here. Excellent. Well, we'll come back when all the trucks are in the yeah. bay. Sounds good. Excellent. Thank you. Open burning season ends May 1st, and Chief Wynn from Confire has some safety reminders for this last week. Burn, baby, burn. That's right, it's open burning season here in the town of Barnstable. With me today, Chief Wynn from Com Fire Station with some tips and some fire safety. Good Chief morning, Wynn. Paul. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity to present to Channel 18 again. Um, as Paul stated, it is open burning season here and across the Commonwealth. The open burning season runs from January 15th to May 1st. Um, it's important to note that open burning is allowed with the permission of the Department of Environmental Protection who determines that the air quality is capable of supporting open burning. The local fire departments are tasked with making sure that the open burning rules are adhered to, but it's important for folks to realize it's ultimately the decision of the Department of Environmental Protection whether or not burning is allowed on each day. Uh, the rules for open burning here in the town of Barnstable are, are consistent with those across the Commonwealth. Burning is allowed from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Fires must be uh, uh, attended at all times. I can't stress enough the importance that when you're doing open burning that you attend that fire, have a, a method of extinguishment readily available, and keep all open burning at least 75 feet from all structures and dwellings. Um, as we know, as we get later in the spring, we approach the month of April, we have a lot of loose ground cover, leaves, twigs, uh, branches that are very, very dry as we wait for the spring to turn our, our uh, beautiful Cape Cod green. Those, those materials are very, very combustible and can spread uh, fire growth very rapidly. So we always require that the fire be attended at all times. Burning hours are 10 to 4, and you have to have it 75 feet from a building and a method of extinguishment readily available to help you should that fire get out of control. Right. And how do residents get their permit? So I know they, you know, everyone's got to get a permit to do their open burns. Sure. At the Com Fire District, you can use our website, which is www.comfiredistrict.com, to determine if we're allowing open burning on a particular day. Uh, once that uh, status is obtained, you can then burn. And like any call for service, if someone calls uh, you know, with a concern about open burning, we will always respond, as will the other districts here in the town of Barnstable. One important note that I think folks uh, need to be aware of is, is the term nuisance. In any open burning situation, whether it's a cooking fire, uh, an open burning fire, uh, it's uh, a fire on the beach, if someone has a concern or, or, or a allegation that the smoke has become a nuisance, the fire is extinguished no matter what. That is required by the Department of Environmental Protection to protect everyone's health and safety, especially those with respiratory problems. So despite Go ahead. Despite being a clear day to conduct open burning and you have a safe fire and you are 75 feet from a building with um, a method of extinguishment and you're attending a fire, if a neighbor or an abutter finds that that smoke is creating a nuisance, you have to extinguish your fire. Okay. Um, and when we're talking about these fires, they should be contained and small. You don't want these large brush fires out there in the middle of the woods. Correct. So our, our status or our opinion on that is, is that the fire should be approachable. If you can't get uh, close to the fire, it's obviously too big. Um, use small amounts of material at a time. Burn it incrementally. Um, don't add any combustible uh, fluids or liquids to the fire to uh, get the fire started. Only use natural kindling to start the fire and then and use common sense. It goes a long way uh, when you're doing open burning. It, for many, open burning is a rite of passage here and a rite of spring on Cape Cod. 
um, but there's danger associated. And we just want you to conduct yourself safely, uh, be conscientious of your neighbors, and uh, enjoy the day you get to spend outside burning brush. Right, and uh, just uh, for those who are burning brush with children around, this Ooh. is really one of those things that, as I grew up, you know, keep the kids away from this. Uh, absolutely, with any open fire, uh, really, uh, vigilance is key. You've got to watch little kids. Um, uh, an accident can happen in a, in a second, um, and uh, having experienced one myself, I, I can't state strongly enough how important it is to be vigilant, pay attention, have a method of extinguishment available, and, um, and take it safe. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you, Chief. You bet. Thank you. Up next, things to do, places to go, and people to meet. The West Barnesville Fire District Annual Meeting is this Wednesday, April 25th at 7 p.m. at the West Barnesville Community Building. Voting for fire district officers is from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. For an agenda, go to the West Barnesville Fire District website, www.westbarnesvillefiredistrict.com. Comments, suggestions, accolades, connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Email us or send us an old-fashioned note by carrier pigeon. Channel 18 works for you. I'm Paula Hersey, and thank you for watching Barnesville Today. Music